Hi, I'm Roy Collin, and I'm the creator of the podcast. You can find everything about me and the five podcasts on bio.link forward slash podcaster, and you'll find it in the QR code there. I'd also like to thank my sponsors. If you or someone you know is struggling with anxiety and want to know how to be 100% anxiety free in six weeks without therapy or drugs, Daniel Packard Anxiety Solution Program Company offers a six weeks system that permanently solves anxiety at an astounding 90% success rate. People who join the program only pay at the end once they have clear, measurable results. If you're interested in learning more, go to permanentanxietysolutions.com where you can book a free consultation with Daniel. Do you have high blood pressure or want to get off the meds? Doctors are amazed at what Zona Plus can do. Get a $50 discount with my code ROY. Go to zona.com slash discount slash ROY and you see the QR code for all my sponsors down at the end. Quality Polish manufacturer of metal products for telecommunication and workshop equipment and other metals. If you'd like a brochure, you see it in the QR code and you just let us know if you would like a quotation shipped internationally and very competitive rates. I hope you enjoy this week's podcast. Welcome to the Meditation Podcast. You can find all our episodes on meditationpodcast.org. I've also got four other podcasts, the Speaking, the Crypto, the Learn Polish, and the Awakening, Exposing Fraud and Corruption, but with Solutions. And I'm also a podcasting coach. And you can find everything on bio.link forward slash podcaster. And I also have the QR code that you can just take a picture and you get the links to all the podcasts. My guest today, he's an artist, an author, a comedian. And he's got a very interesting story. And you can see his beautiful art in the background. He's from Baltimore in Mar- Maryland, is it? Is that the... Please welcome yes. Rob- Robert Florio. Hey, everybody. It's awesome to be here. <laughs> yeah, and also, it's nice to meet you. And there's one thing I didn't say. Like, when they look at the pictures, I mean, I wish I could paint like that. But you're doing it slightly different. You're doing it with your mouth. So you might just kind of let people know your your whole story oh sure thank you for this opportunity um so yeah i mean hi everybody my name is robert florio um i painted that with my mouth actually when i was 14 i dove into a swimming pool and uh broke my neck and uh it's been 26 years and um so it's been a really amazing weird wacky journey like he said the things i've been doing and um it's just you know it's just one of those things where it's like what do you do now you know and i just started discovering meditation and that's where things really took off the, la- the last few years um we should get into that one we probably will get into that and it'll be really interesting no definitely so i suppose I mean, obviously, it's painful what kind of the whole journey that you've taken. But I, I suppose, let people know how hard it was for you. Because one, first of all, 14 is a kind of, it's an age, you're, you know, you're just approaching, you're about to be a man and you have this accident. So like surgeries and kind of the whole thing going through your head after it happened, you might kind of take us through that. Oh, I appreciate that. Um. um... Yeah, 14 was hard. I mean, that was a transitioning time where, you know, you're coming into your manhood. And, you know, it. I think a lot of listeners don't realize sometimes when you have a spinal cord injury, what ha- happens is some people lose all feeling, you know, from the chest down. And that was really hard for me, not just moving, but having people do stuff for me. And, um, you know, so I was, uh, one thing that happened to me, when I had my injury, you see the ball player behind me. I loved to play baseball. That was my hero, like Cal Ripken Jr. And um, and uh, so I was in the 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 room for rehab, and I was seeing that all the video games you couldn't play with your hands. And I said, one day I I need to make a video game that could help people. And uh, that's where I kind of am. And it's like the surgeries I've been through. I've been through two neck surgeries. Um, after that one, but the most recent one was 2016, where I was in so much pain to relieve it. And, um, I, after that, I had four outer body experiences and that's what led me to the meditations. And, 
I was, I was trying to heal myself. And uh, some amazing things happened to me, things I've experienced and and uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, you, you name it, I probably could. I could give you some amazing examples of what I can have experienced. <laughs> Well, I suppose let us know the If first that time helps. it happened, because normally when these things happen, you know, we kind of we don't know what to, to, what's going on. So your very first time, what exactly did you feel and what did you see? What happened? To you? Well, my outer body experience. Yeah. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Well, I was really sleepy and I was in my bedroom and I just said, let me take a nap. And I closed my eyes just like I am now. And I flew out of my body. And I flew across the room, down the hall, and I was floating at the bottom of the stairs. And I could see this all surrounded by golden, hazy light. And the, the, the front door was like lit up like bright white. And I saw a bunch of people running down the stairs and I couldn't see them, but I just saw their legs. And some of them had shoes on, some of them had high tops, some of them had flip flops, some of them had no shoes. My first thought as a com comedian, is I'm sitting here floating in my astral body and I'm thinking, is there designer clothing in the afterlife? What is going on here? Like, you know, like people have shoes on. Like, what is, why do you need shoes here? I don't get it. Like, <laughs> yeah, so that was the first time. Um, yeah, it was, it was, that was my introduction. And and yeah. then like you you started kind of delving into meditation after that, or what was your full meditation journey? What kind of meditation were you doing? Well, I started getting into um um Dr. Joe work. Is that okay to say that? Yeah, of course. Anything. Yeah, yeah. that's all. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Joe Dispenza work. I really looked into him. Um, I think I saw like a rewired um thing on on a on a show. And I was watching it and I was like, holy crap, you can heal yourself through meditation. And so I started getting into that. And um, um, I started learning how to like do things. And I was like, well, if I could heal myself, maybe I could heal other people. And um, it took me some time to really like really get deep into it and keep the meditations on. And um, just let go. And one day I was in my backyard and I was doing this sitting in the sun, just relaxing. And something came over me and there was a knot in my neck on the right side. And I felt like my neck crack and pop. And this jolt of lightning went down both arms and I could feel my fingers like like flickering. And it was really, really crazy. And And since that day, like the neck pain, that knot never came back. And it's been years. So, I mean, I still get pain. But that day was just amazing. That told me this is, you can do this. You know? Brilliant. And like, after it happened, I mean, obviously, you know, with your family and everything, but like adjusting, what was it like for the whole family? Oh, the whole family... Um, My parents mostly they they take care of me the most, and we have nursing, but um it's been really hard because, um you know, like they don't can't really go anywhere if I don't have a nurse and if I'm not feeling good, I'll, I'll stay home, or if I don't have like, um, transportation, then nobody goes anywhere. We just stay. Um, but I had to get out and and um be with friends. I lost all of my friends, like all of them, like just gone. And they didn't want to hang out with me anymore. I guess it was a weird age. Um, even till this day, you know, it's still kind of a weird thing because you know, like I don't, I feel like I don't have that like solid backing. You know what I mean? Like you have when you grow up with kids that you've been with your whole life, and then they're just gone and not around anymore, and you live here. It's just a weird feeling. So that was hard, but I got through that. A lot of prayers, a lot of things like that. My my um, my other part of the family, you know, they they have their own lives. So it's kind of like, you know, they don't really aren't really involved in taking care of me. So that's kind of difficult when you really need that sometimes um, to really figure out like what's their role and how to bring them into it. So yeah, that's those those sort of things are are a common challenge for a spinal injury. Okay.
And I, I saw, because I was looking at some of the videos, and I, I see, and I've come across that stuff before. I see a Renu, because I could see the picture of you. I don't know what age you were, but you know you were obviously an adult. But then when you started taking that, you looked 10 years younger. Oh, with the Renew, the ASEA? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, because um, that's another thing that I was I was praying and meditating about one day. I said, I was in so much pain. I was like, there's got to be something out there that's in the, the works that's already people are using. So I got a phone call one day from my sister. And thank you for bringing this up because she called me up and she was like, you got to try this. And it was this this liquid water. It was made from like the sodium in your body. And I was at first like, how can that help? And then I started looking at the science between re about redox molecules and the redox molecules are in our body. They are basically the powerhouse, the, the generator, the, the energy for the cell to regenerate. And it it's a cell signaling molecule. So it signals to your DNA, like to repair itself. And, um, this biotech company called ASEA figured out a way how to stabilize that molecule outside the body. So I got the gel and I got the water, the Renew 28, and I, I've been drinking that for since like two or like three or four years now. And um, I tell people about it and um, like it's forever. You can put it on your face. You can give you like a facelift, um, pressure sores. Um, I spray it in my eyes. I drink it. I haven't had a cavity in three years since I started using that stuff, like it's, 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 it's like a, it's almost like a, like a, um, like the fountain of youth almost like, because it's your body. So you can't reject it. And, you know, it's anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, anti-fungal, all these like anti-properties. And uh, it's like, it's, it's amazing. I really am blessed to have that um, in my life. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, you can take check take a look at that on my website. Some of yeah, the stuff that you can go yeah, to, Robert. Yeah, definitely. And which, like, because you were on a lot of medications for the pain, you were able to reduce the medications because of that as well, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I got off a cold turkey. I went to a um to a meeting that they were having, and I was on oxycodone and morphine for almost more than seven, maybe eight years. Um. And um, so I went to this meeting they were having and I said, if this stuff really is legit, I'm going to do it like full on. Right. So I stopped all of that that day and um, I started piling on the gel every day, like three times in five minutes to get like into the three layers of skin. And I was drinking it, you know, um, and uh, within like it took me like six months uh, to really start feeling like it was doing something like, cause it had to, my body had to rebuild the levels of redox in my system. And the gel was kind of like, I was fighting it at first because I couldn't believe that it would work. So my mind was kind of like saying no while the gel was saying yes. So it took me a little while to get to there. But once I did, I was like, yeah, I, I, I it was, it was a hard, it was a little hard at first to kind of like be like, I'm on these, these, this, because my brain was telling me that this stuff's killing me, you know, this, this oxy crap, you know, that, that people are hooked on. And I was like, and this is my body in a bottle. So I can use as much of this as I want. So I, that's what I did. And it was expensive, <laughs> but I, I was, uh, I went through with it and I, I tell people about it, which helps me kind of, you know, get, you know, bring the cost down a little bit, but amazing amazing breakthrough um people really need to know about that <laughs> thank you for bringing that up yeah, no problem. so like i mean i mentioned at the start about your fantastic art and i went into your website you've got incredible art i'd like to know your journey to kind of why you decided to start painting and then how you got so good oh yeah well i um i was an artist before my injury like i was a little bit like into it a lot and um so i was at school at um in baltimore like a school called kennedy krieger for kids with like disabilities and learning disabilities and one of my teachers just handed me a mouth stick i was like here here's a watercolor set so i just started using it and like my first painting was like a tropical tree scene 
and it came out really well. So ever since then, I just started doing portraits and things. And I started recognizing that like the painting was like my escape, you know, like, you know, like the lonely days, the painful days, just the unbelievable like things that go through your mind when you have a spinal cord injury, because your, your whole life is flipped upside down and you have to make sense of it again. And nobody can relate to you. And it's like, you know, how do you do things? You know, you don't want to play sports. You want to hang out with girls. It's hard to figure all that out, especially at that age. So um, it was just a great thing for me to get into. Like, it, it really saved me to get into art. I went to the community college um, after high school. I went to like a Christian high school. Um, my parents were really helping me get there. Um, and then after that, I went to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh online. And um, I got a bachelor's degree in video game art and design. And this is where like the story takes off, I feel, because you remember when I told you like in the beginning, like I was in rehab when I had my injury and I wanted to play my favorite video game, which was Earthworm Jim. Um, and I couldn't play it. I couldn't play any of them. Even to this day, it's still hard to play video games. Like, um, I have some tools and things to do it, but it's it's a pain in the butt to set up and get you know get all that things figured out. Um, so, do you mind if I say something real quick? Like, describe. Of course, yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. So your listeners are hearing a story about something that is like when you put your mind on something and you're like, I know this is gonna happen. And I feel like it's going to happen and you connect to the thoughts and the emotions of that happening like you know quantum physics quantum entanglement says it's the law it must find you as long as you can stay attached to that energy well I stayed attached to that energy but it came in in a way I could have never expected like um, so I got that degree in video game art and design I got out of school and I was looking for a job and they were all kind of far away I didn't really you know, go online like maybe I should and look around and things were kind of getting worse with my neck pain. So I started getting into like stand up comedy to, just to feel like I could do something in the area, you know, see, let my talent kind of shine. Um, I started doing that for like 10 years. Every once in a while, I'd get a ride. Like one of my nurses would drive me to a show around Baltimore and I would do that. I would do like maybe I don't know, two or three shows a month, which is a lot for me. I know most comedians do like two or three in a week. <laughs> but um, so I got to do that. And um, so here I am now. And all the pain I've been going through, all the, the, the discovery and the things I've been trying to figure out in life, you know, trying to find love again in my life. And, um, you know, with relationships, that's been hard as well. But um so here I am now and I started learning about meditation and all these amazing things that are happening and you can do through it and the science behind it. And I thought, wait a minute, I have this degree. I should make a hands-free facial recognition meditation game. And I was like, how am I going to do that? So I started meditating on that. And here we are like, I put together a Kickstarter page and um, it's on my website, um, just robertflorio.com. And um, we're trying, I'm looking to really bring people in who are really interested in this. And the, the really cool thing about the this is that there's not a lot of games you can play without your hands. And so I thought, you know, mobile games is something that's really, everyone has a, a mobile device. Um, maybe that's the best way to, to go about this. And, um, you know, if you're using your face and not your hands, it's really an interesting challenge because you don't have to um, worry about it. You could just have your phone up and it can see you and you smile and it, you know, it could run through a meditation that way. Um, and so I'm, I'm going through that. I'm looking, I'm looking in ways to, um, expand on how to do um kind of like uh what kind of games and um remote viewing is really an interesting one i think might be like the top of the starting point if you know what i mean are you familiar with remote viewing 
Not really, no. Oh, it's one of those things where you can see things that are hidden. Where, um, so there's this idea where it's called what's in the box. And I teach people this where we'll do like a three or four minute meditation together. And I'll have a box just sitting here on my shoulder or somewhere in the camera. Or, um, and you'll see it in the video if you go on my website for the Kickstarter. Um, my nephew was actually teaching him this. And so I was teaching him to quiet his mind and just invite what might be in that box. Neither of us knew. And within seconds, we both were like, I think there's keys in that box. So he opened it up and he was like, oh, my God. There was a, a, a pair of keys in the box. It was just, it was just phenomenal. And I was like, wow. So the things we can do is just, you know, it's, it's unlimited almost like where you, if you can take your mind there, like you, you can really do some incredible things. And that's, yeah, I, I it just gives me chills thinking about it. <laughs> No, fantastic. No, I think it's a, a brilliant idea. And there's, there's like plenty of people that will benefit from that. And just like what I would encourage you to do is kind of reach out to the people that have kind of s similar situations, because a lot of them to write are blogging. There's even some of them podcasting. I, I've got a friend that he's a he, he's doing that as well. And I can connect you later. And basically, then they can go to their their list and, you know, just help it because like with the especially kickstart i mean it's just a case of just getting as many people as possible to come in and i saw that you've got some like your own art is there as well you've got different things that will help you know and it's actually very reasonably priced as well so you know people can go in they can help you they can there's a load of different pull down menus but it's what i would encourage you is just reach out to all the different people and get 30 people that are blasting this out because they will benefit from it as well and know get kind of build a community to, to to make it together yeah that's an awesome idea i'm just i'm so blessed and honored to be here with you it's just you know one of those things you do when you have a dream you just follow it you know believe <laughs> no problem. so like you you mentioned you started doing the the the, the, the stand-up comedy so like when you've done it first, like, were you nervous? And like, how did you kind of, did you start playing with different jokes? And because I, I've done just a small bit, if I've done speeches and say Toastmasters, it was always comedy. I love doing the comedy, but I know it can be nerve wracking as well. And I'm just wondering for yourself, how did you feel when you started off? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at first it was, at first, honestly, um, my first gig was at the Baltimore Comedy Factory. And that's a big venue and they were doing like a contest and I was oddly enough, like my first time I was just really confident and I've never done these jokes in front of anyone. So I, I took like two weeks and I was like just writing down everything I could think of. And I took the list and then I refined it to the best jokes and I refined it again. So without even knowing, like I was doing the process of meditation just building the confidence up those two weeks, like really preparing, really preparing. And um, that really helped. So I went on stage and I was in front of the stage. And um, <laughs> it's really funny because the I didn't even say a word and the whole crowd just bursted out laughing. You can actually see the video online. Um, I actually recorded it. Um, and... So I sat in front of the stage and I just looked at everyone really quiet and I was eyeballing everyone and they were just looking at me and I was just building the anticipation. And then I just bursted into like my impression of Timmy from South Park. And I just went, oh, Timmy. And then everyone just started like, right, because everyone could relate to that because they see my disability and, you know, they see that it kind of like they make the connection. And I just kept rolling with that and rolling and people were like rolling out of their chairs and that just lifted the whole thing. And I was like, honestly, I looked, I watched their reaction and I was like, I really like this. This is a good feeling. So um, I did some more jokes and people liked it. It was nice. It was just, it was a phenomenal like first step, like um, to show that like I was I, like, it just felt good to like, express and let people see my talent 
you know, because for so many years, it just felt like I've been hiding, you know, like, you know what I mean? How, you know, it's just, so it was good. And then after that, I would go to different shows and, you know, different bars and it was a different atmosphere. You had to learn to read the crowd sometimes. So, yeah, it, it's, yeah, I'm really happy I've, I've done that because it really helps like show doing shows and stuff um and, and comedy is really healing too as well <laughs> yeah yeah laughter heals the soul definitely yeah so you're an author and uh, like i was going in looking at the reviews they're all positive reviews they're all kind of you know writing beautiful things about it so what what was the reasoning behind the book and you might just tell us what the book is about oh thanks for bringing that up so my, my book is called Life, It Must Be a Comedy. And uh, I called it that because life is really hard. And comedy is something that allows you to see a window into possibilities, just uplifting, you know, that. And um, so I got into comedy and I was like, well, the book is basically about my whole life, like before my injury, after my injury up to the point where I graduated um, college and and um, started venturing into the comedy world and just exploring who I really am. And I think I published it in 2010. So from 2010 to now, there's been a lot of going on, but I wrote that and I was like, um, you know, it, it's one of those things, there's, it, it shows all the challenges I've been through with my relationships as well. Um, the struggles I go through with, with the family and, and the, the, the good times, the bad times in life, um, the good times with the family. Um, it's, there's a lot in there about, um, um, there, there's really something for everyone in it. Cause it, it kind of make you laugh. It'll make you cry. Um, there's, there's a whole chapter in there devoted to like, um, I know your, your listeners are into meditation and sometimes that can branch into, you know, your mind and the possibilities of the universe. Uh, there's a chapter in there where I met someone who was from another planet when I was a kid and they were in my backyard and I never really knew what, what the connection was to that until now. And so meditation has bridged up and I'm again I've met many other people from other worlds. Um, some of them come to my house and they don't really sit, stick around, talk. Uh, so some of that's in there, but so most of it's like you, you can talk to them through meditation or sleep dream states, but to get them to actually come in and like say hello is a little different, I think. Um, but uh, it can happen. Anyway, I don't know why I went there. I just thought it was an interesting, I was just thinking in my brain, like all of the chapters and the things that I've been doing and there's there's a lot in there I think I really exposed the world of a quadriplegic and um if you dive deep into that book you'd be like whoa I did not know this was going on on this planet like people are going through this and um so that's where I'm at like I'm ready to like ex expand you know like it you know being a quad is so challenging it just drains a lot of your energy to get up and do things. And so it's like, you know, what, however many years I have left on this planet, like, I feel like that's what I need to be doing. I need to be helping people grow and, and heal. And, and, um, I, I, I'm completely awakened after this experience, like a second after it happened, like I went from 14 to like an adult, like I knew, like I was awake, like the second my injury happened. It was, there was no going back. Like you're never going to be the same after that. And it's the same with a lot of these outer body experiences and meditations, like things that I've experienced. Can I tell a quick story? Like that'll kind sure. of like really blow your mind. Okay. So after I got into meditation, um, this was about a year ago. I think this happened to me. Um, so um, I was in a sleep state and I was dreaming and all of a sudden, like I'm walking, uh, I'm standing, I'm in this room and it's real to me. Like, it's almost as real as I'm like with you now. Like it was, I was there. Um, so I saw all these kids and they were like running for their life. And they were like, 
and I saw all these bullets like frozen, like you know, in the Matrix where um the movie The Matrix Neo freezes all the bullets. Yeah, I've done that. I've done that. I was in this room and all the bullets were like frozen in time. So I was taking my hand and I was trying to like push them. I grabbed like a napkin or something. I was trying to push them away. And I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to do, but I knew something was really serious happening. And so I grabbed a kid that was in front of me and I I shoved him under a desk. And then um, I could sense where the bullets were coming from. And um, this is kind of emotional. I know this is a weird subject for people, but it has to be said. Um, and then I was standing there and I just saw all this blood come gushing out of my head. I didn't feel it. I passed out. And, and fell on the ground and then I woke up and I was like what in the world was that what in the world did I just experience what just happened to me um, and then three days later I saw on the news what happened there was a mass shooting at Robb Elementary in um, in uh, uh, Texas and it had my name on the elementary school so that was a sign to me saying connect the dots, Robert, like you are, are meant to do something here. And like, I'm almost about to tear up when I tell this story, it's really emotional, but I think people need to hear that because there's, there's something going on here. And, and I think, um, we're just on the, the brink of discovering humanity is about is, is going to evolve. And I think that people who go through traumatic experiences and are opening themselves to this process are going to leap forward the whole planet and, that vibrational energy is somehow going to wake everyone up. And it's not really everyone needs to wake up. It's kind of like this, this 1% of the world where this, this really weird effect happens and um, it influences the other 99%. But that kind of stuff is just like what's happening to me. So thanks for letting me share. It's just, And I think that sometimes when we lose different senses, we gain others like i think we probably all have the ability but we've lost it through the teaching school teaching and everything and you know what, what, what you've went through has made you kind of more aware of your other senses which in turn has allowed you to actually see and experience these different things exactly exactly yeah yep so like um, prior to recording, Alexa decided to have an old chat with you. <laughs> and you were saying, I hope that does not. So I would love to know what is actually helping you, because obviously, you know, you're, you're trying to do as much as you can. And I love what you're doing with the Kickstarter. You're trying to do a lot. Of, you're doing incredible things like but what things are actually obviously, Alexa, you can talk to. But what kind of things are there that's really making your life easier? Uh, that's a good question. Um I think the things that make my life a lot easier the most is um, a lot of voice command stuff on my phone. Um, there's like a voice access app that comes with Android. Um, there's and there's an there's also an app. Uh, it's built into Android now, I think, and there's one that's built into uh, I, iPhones and iPads. Um, voice control. Those are really helpful. Um, I have an eye tracking sensor. Um, I think Toby makes it. It's a eye eye gaze or eye gaze five or something. Um, and um, those things are really helpful. They're a little cumbersome at first, but they they're not they're not as quick as you could be, but they're pretty quick. Um, uh, definitely the Alexa stuff. That's unless you probably just heard me. <laughs> I teased all the time when my girlfriend is over because she won't listen to me and she'll be like, that's because she knows I'm here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, people, I think people in my life that are, I can meet that are really like receptive and kind. That's really helpful. Um, um, what else is going to help? Um, my mouth stick, that really helps a lot. Um, in terms of technology. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm in the I'm waiting for Neuralink to give me a brain implant. <laughs> the Elon Musk company. I had a meeting with them just just to have uh to put myself on the registry. So maybe by the end of the year they they might have one planned. 
So that would be interesting. Uh, that would really be like good. <laughs> um, so those sort of things, and I'm sure there's other technology that's out there. You know, it's some of it's really expensive, so you can't really get to it. Um, there's robotic arms that are out there. Um, insurance doesn't really cover. So I've had really been trying to figure out how to get those. Um, um, you know, maybe I'll manifest one, manifest it one day, but they exist. So, and the weird thing is they've, they, those robot arms have existed since my injury. So I'm kind of like, I've been thinking like, why haven't I had one? Like probably because they're like 30, 30, 30 grand or more. So it's like, who's, you know what I mean? So that's kind of like the challenge, but, um, for the most part, yeah, that's been, uh, the Amazon stuff has really really exposed a lot of help for me yeah uh, and i think there's probably more a lot more out there brilliant and just curious with your act because i've i've seen the videos where you're kind of going around somebody's going around taking the the pictures of all the different art did your art develop based on your mood or was it always kind of like what was kind of inspiring you to what you're painting um let me think about that my mood has a lot to do with it. I think um, because painting really is relaxing and it's kind of like once you, once you start, you don't want to kind of stop. It just kind of starts flowing. But um, I have noticed that if I'm like inspired by something, the artwork takes off a different, different route. Like, um, um, like if I have a girlfriend and say her favorite flower is a sunflower and I, I recently found that out. So I'm like, I'm thinking in my brain, now I want to paint some sunflowers, you know? Like, it's just that kind of flow where you just go with, you know, where where where, where you're feeling in the moment. And it just lets you expand those, those, uh, those states of being, which is nice. And, you know, it lets me create something instantly, which is hard to do if you can't use your hands. Kind of like I'm in control. Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, like, you're obviously an incredible painter. You're an author, a stand-up comedian, and now you're, you know, uh, planning on creating this app to help people. Like, what have you? What, what else is on the agenda that you're putting out there? Because I think you throw it out there, there's a way, better chance of it happening anyway. So I'd love, love to know what else you're, you're looking to achieve, which you will, I know. Oh, wow. That's a really powerful statement, actually. So if I were to say one thing um, that I would have to throw out there and bring it back, and you were like, oh, this is the one thing. You know, because you're never gonna, you're never gonna stop creating. There's always there's infinite things that you could experience. And but we do have limited time, you know, in these bodies, you know, and then we can experience those things. And so I would say the one thing that I would say that would come would bring all of this together um, in my lifetime would be um, a real sense that I'm, 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 I would love to be one of the people that other people really know about and say, well, if there was a shift on the planet and there, there really needed to be some kind of, you know, different way of looking at who we are, where we're from, where we're going, and what we're doing with each other, like, like, are we really caring for each other? Do we really care for each other? Like, you know, I feel like at the top of the list is consumerism and caring for each other is at the very bottom and it should be flipped. And when you flip it, you'll get better consumerism and better care because the products will all be geared toward helping you and, you know, and not killing the planet. So I think that's a big awakening. And what's going to happen is um, there's there's what what's already happening. And I've been recording this is um, there's a documentary that my buddy is working on. And so I've been meditating a lot and I'll go out in my backyard and I'll just look out into the universe and say, is anybody out there? Would you like to say hello? And they'll say hello. And anyone can do this. Anyone. If you want to meet somebody. And, and really be expanded on like what's going on who am i on this planet and what on this little dot on this infinite universe of 
billions and trillions of planets and stars, go outside and say, reach deep down in your heart and and connect to that part of yourself that is unbounded, like a sense of innocence, and say, who's out there? Can you say hello to me? It's safe to do so. And these people will say hello to you. They'll show up. And it's really amazing. And I think that is one of the things that people do not realize. But that's that's the biggest secret on this having hidden from people. And it's hard to talk about because you start getting into, okay, well, what's what's the benefit of talking to someone from another world? And why are they flying around and what's going on? When you look at what's flying around and what's going on, it's alternate propulsion technology. And that does not want to come out. And that's why it's been so hard for all the ridicule and all the people being made fun of for, you know, ETs aren't real. Oh, we, ETs are real. No, they're real. You're, they're just as real as you. And as soon as that's exposed and people experience that on like a, an obvious and not a threat, it's not a threat. They're not going to kill you. They're not coming to suck your brow like the, like, uh, you know, Hollywood has really portrayed it. And that, that's that's a, a real thing. That, that's just, well, they're not threatening at all. Because, and I'll, I'll just really quick tell you, the reason why they're not threatening is because when you get to a point at your civilization, and it makes sense that I've learned about this, is that once you've mastered all the war, you've gotten past war, you've gotten past, you know, you know caring for each other and consumerism and all the things that, all this thing, you know, economics, you start experiencing um, what the power of your thoughts are. Because the you can't travel to the stars at the speed of light. It's too slow. The only way you're going to get there is through the, the speed of thought. And that means that anybody now can communicate with each other anywhere. So that's like, you know, one of those things where it's like, it's just my mind wants to go there you know just see that happen it would just be awesome beautiful beautiful listen robert thoroughly enjoyed the conversation i know people can help you obviously going to your website and they can buy your art they can buy your book and give you a five star rating because that will all help in the algorithms they can go into your kickstarter campaign and there's all different uh tiers that they can support you and even just sharing, like if they're not e able to actually even donate something that they can just share with their friends who in turn might. Is there any other way that people can help? Um, yeah, I think the biggest way is just when you go to the website, um, robertflorio.com, you'll see the links to um, everything I've been doing. I think that is the hub where I, I've been trying to get, you know, things rolling and and, you know, I just encourage you to, when you do go there, you know, you're not just helping me, you're helping yourself because you never know how things are going to happen in your life and they're going to come in a way you don't expect. And they have to, because that's the unknown. That's what we're creating. We're creating in the unknown. Don't be afraid of the unknown. And I know that people, that when you get there, it's a little uncomfortable. This, this is This is amazing. And I just think it's just going to be, working together with people and, and, and seeing this come to light. It's just giving me chills. It's really inspiring me. I'm really honored to be here. It's just really cool to see how things can come together when you stay connected to that, to the energy of your future. And I think that's, that's, you know, everything I've been trying to put together is right there. That's on that website. And it's, it's kind of cool <laughs> to say that, like, so thank you. <laughs> Um, no problem. I'll make sure, Robert, that I'll put the link spot on the audio and the video. So that's all for the Meditation Podcast. You'll find all our episodes on meditationpodcast.org. You'll find all my further podcasts along with my coaching on bio.link forward slash podcast or on the QR code. And make sure you check out Robert's uh, website and also give him a five-star rating when you buy his book. Until next week, take care. So I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. You'll find everything about me on bio.link forward slash podcaster with all my podcasts and you'll find it you see in the QR code in the graphic that's shown. I'd like again to thank my sponsors, 
So if you or someone you know struggling with anxiety and want to know how to be 100% anxiety free in six weeks without therapy or drugs, Daniel Packard's Anxiety Solution Program company offers a six week system that permanently solves anxiety at an astounding 90% success rate. People who join the program only pay at the end once they have clear, measurable results. If you're interested in learning more, go to permanentanxietysolutions.com where you can book a free consultation with Daniel. Do you fight blood pressure and or want to get off the meds? Doctors are amazed at what Zona Plus can do. You can get a $50 discount with my code Roy, zona.com slash discount slash Roy. And you'll see it in the QR code as well as Daniel's QR code. Quality manufacturer of metal products for telecommunication and workshop equipment and other metal materials. you see the brochure there in the QR code. And let me know if you would like a quotation shipped internationally at very competitive price. I'd like to thank all my sponsors and also all my listeners. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Five star rating, share with your friends. Really helps. And I also have a video on how to give a five star rating because a lot of people have wrote to me asking me that they don't know how to do that. Until next week, take care.